actually uh, next lecture is number seven. So this lecture seven I'll make purely about the supply driven Gauche model. So just a, a rehash, you remember when we all did the Saman, the, the, when we derived the demand driven model, basically we, uh, we wrote gross output as a sum, as a, as a, as a sum of, oops, of intermediate demand plus, oops, plus final demand. Remember that? That was second lecture or so. Or second lecture. So this is the expenditure side of the national accounts. Where does it all go? Who, who, uh, who gets the, uh, who, who spends on what and who gets the revenue from it? And so it's the horizontal side if you remember the diagram. But there's another way of, of calculating X and that's from the supply side. So this goes X equals uh, 1 transposed T plus V transpose, transpo because we're dealing with columns, right? So this is output, this is input, and so that you have to multiply the summation operator from the left-hand side, and you get a row vector of value added, okay? This, this goes to X equals uh, 1 minus A inverse Y, and this one um, goes to X equals uh, V transpose 1 minus A star, inverse, right? Um, where a, and the difference here is a i j is the uh, the coefficient made the Leontief coefficients matrix that is t i j divided by x j, but a star a i j star equals t i j divided by x i. What's the difference? This is a transaction, let's say, let's make iron ore and steel. This is the, number, the amount of dollars that the iron ore industry, I pays to steel, to make steel, per unit of steel. Per unit of steel. So steel is the inputting, the, the receiving side of this transaction. So it's a production recipe, okay? It's per unit of, of, the, of the recipient, of the output of the recipient. This here is per unit of the output of the supplier. So this is not here a production recipe, this is a sales recipe, or uh, it's not a production or an input coefficient, this is a sales coefficient. Right? So in, if you transform actually the, the, the income side of the national accounting uh, identity into an input output relationship, which is this, then this matrix here is a sales coefficients matrix. And that makes sense because uh, people have also said this is a, a sort of a uh, a demand driven uh, model because you pull with Y, you say, I want to buy this and you need that, 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 you go upstream. So you need to know what do you need, what do you need to meet my demand? And what does the next stage meet, needs to meet that demand? Here you ask, you start with V as the driving factor and said, um, I want to grow this, I want to put more labor in it, more surplus, more capital into this industry. And then you say, oh, how much do I have to sell to absorb that input into, of capital labor into the industry, right? And down the track, how much does my, my uh, recipient has to sell for their increase of my sales to them to be viable, and so on and so on. So this is really a, a supply-driven model where you push into the, in, into the production side and you hope that demand is forced. Completely the opposite of that. So that's why you need sales coefficients in here. And that, this is called the Leontief model, or demand pull model. This is the so-called Gosh model, after an Indian economist Gosh, and it's a supply push model. Right? What is the interpretation of a supply push model? Think about it. If you, in, in a capitalist society, uh, we, we think that, that our society is driven by consumer demand. So if, if an industry produces something, uh, that nobody wants, it won't be in the market because there's no demand for it. And what people come up with, then industries emerge uh, uh, to fill that market niche. That's how we used to think. So, um, uh, and that's why this demand, this Leontief model is much more widespread. Probably because of the perception that economies are demand driven. Now, what examples, are there actually examples for a supply driven economy? How would that economy work? Or is there an alternative interpretation for a supply-driven model? Could you think of one? There's two ways how to answer that question.
First of all, in the early days when a supply-driven uh, supply push model was, was devised, people said, yeah, that's a, that's a model for centrally planned economies. Because they throw whatever on the market and people make do. Sometimes they bake a cake with 2% of butter, sometimes with 5% of butter, you know, and that's just it. They just make do with whatever they have. But then some of the people said, no, no, really, I mean, you can't, you know, of course, you, you can have less steel or more steel and still build a, build a car out of all of this, but there's limits to that, right? You, you can't build a car with 50% steel or something, in the extreme case. So there's always difficulties in interpreting this model in a quantity sense, you know? So I put more labor in it and they produce more steel as stuff, steel stuff, and they build more cars out of that, more steel even with or without more plastic, because we don't know whether there will be more plastic as well. So really people had trouble, but there's an interesting interpretation of that which came out in the 80s, and that is to look at this as a price model. You could say, well, this V, this dollars, is not dollars of stuff, but it's dollars of worth. And then it works, because you can say, well, if, if I increase my labor cost, then my output will be more expensive, not that it will be more, but it will be more expensive, and then I pass that price down to my suppliers, and they have to pass it on too, and ultimately consumer goods are going to be more expensive. This you can use very nicely to look at a carbon tax, for example. That was the end of lecture 7.